Hi everyone! Welcome to the sixth part of my Blender tutorial series where we are working on this yummy donut. In the last part we learned a bunch of new things and created this nice looking icing with droplets. Today we'll go back to our sprinkles because they are quite simple compared to our icing geometry. So, how can we improve it? That will be a topic of this video. Our goal in this tutorial will be the randomization of particles. Currently we have different rotations and scales which already make it look nice, but I want to take it one step further. To add extra details we'll create a random radius to randomize it on our curves and furthermore I want to add slight bending to each sprinkle. And best of all, each sprinkle will have different bending. Finally, to create nice shading I want to add a bevel on the edges of our sprinkles and on the topic of shading I will also create a new attribute for our material to randomize each sprinkle's color. So without further ado, let's jump into Blender and continue our work with geometry nodes. So, last time when we work on sprinkles I left the Realize Instances node. This will be really useful now because it will allow me to edit each sprinkle separately. First of all, let's add our bending. If you look at the reference image, you can see that sprinkles are often slightly bent. I want to recreate that in our system. To do that, we will need slightly more geometry. And by slightly, I mean just one more vertex in the middle of each curve. To do that, we can use a resample curve node. Just before our instance on points node. Here, just after the curve line, let's add the resample curve node. This time, we'll not be using length mode, instead, I will use count mode. This is because I want to create exactly three points end point, midpoint, and start point. Let's set count to 3 then. Now, why do we need this midpoint anyway? Because what I want to do is move the midpoint randomly. Then, with a little bit of smoothing, we'll have this nice bent particle. So, let's add a set position node here. First, we need to create some sort of selection field to be able to select the midpoint. Because we are working with curves, there is a perfect node for that. Let's add an endpoint selection node. This node allows us to select points in curves starting from both endpoints. Let me show you this example. As you can see, we have a simple curve. If you start selecting more on the start size, we'll have more selection here. If we increase end size, we will have more selection at the other side. We can create any combination we like. So, to select a midpoint, in our case, we need to first select both endpoints, and to do that, let's set endpoint selection to 1 and 1. Now, we can invert the selection with a simple NOT node. Great. If we play with the offset inside the set position node, now we can move midpoints around. Now, we need to make it random. There is a node perfect for creating random values. Do you remember its name? It's the random value node. This time we can set its mode to vector because I want to move my midpoint in all three directions for the best randomization. We can play with the min and max range. Values are gonna be really, really small, as you can see. We can even add two multiply math nodes to have a better control over the setup. I will multiply my first value by a small number. For the second multiply I will use the same number but negative. We can use a single value node here that will control our bending strength. Now we can clearly see what we are doing. We can also plug in our group seat. 
So, we have this little arrow shape now. We need to make it smoother to really create a bent line. For that, I want to use our smooth group, but there's a little problem. We don't have enough geometry to do that. Let's add a smooth group. As you can see, the smoothing just makes our particles smaller. Remember, we have only three points on each curve, so there is no way to make it nice and smooth. We need to resample our curve first. So, let's add a resample curve node and set the mode to length. I will set it to 1 mm. Great. As you can see, our smooth node works well, but it still makes the sprinkles shorter. We can reduce this effect by just making our curve line slightly longer here. Great. Let's preview our mesh now. As you can see, we have a nicely bent sprinkles and each one is completely unique. Now we are ready to add one more additional detail. Currently, our sprinkles have a constant radius along their length. However, sprinkles are often thinner or thicker in different places. We can do that really simply, just like we did with the icing droplets using the set curve radius node. Let's add this node here after smoothing. To control the radius, I want to use a noise texture. We've used noise a few times before, so nothing new here. Let's add the standard setup with a noise texture. Offset coordinates group and group input. If we plug the noise texture directly into the set curve radius node, we won't see much. This is because our noise is much too large right now. Let's preview it on top of our geometry. Remember, noises in Blender are usually created in 3D space, so we can preview the same noise on different geometries, even on different domains. Let's change the scale of noise. And perfect. That's it. To control the strength and contrast, I will use map range node here. Let's play with it a little bit. Now you can see a difference. It's really subtle, but it creates additional details in our donut, and thanks to that we'll have more realistic results. Great. So, the last thing I want to do with our sprinkled geometry is to add a bevel. Unfortunately, there is no bevel node currently inside the geometry node. But don't worry, we'll create a bevel effect for our particles differently. You just a few notes. Here's the approach I choose. First, we'll extrude our circular faces and then scale them down a little bit. Repeat the process one more time and set the shade to smooth. Great. We have a nice looking bevel. So, let's do this. First, let's add an extrude mesh node at the end. Uncheck the individual option. Now we need to provide a selection. How can we select only circular faces? By using the endpoint attribute once again. We cannot use it directly here because this is a mesh, not a curve. But we can store it just before our conversion as a custom attribute. Let's do that. Let's add a store named attribute node and name it endpoints. Let's duplicate the endpoint selection node and plug it in. I will change the type to boolean. If you look at the spreadsheet now, you can see that we have our attribute here after conversion 2. Great. Let's use it with a named attribute node. Remember? I added this node to my quick favorite, so I just need to press the Q key. And select it. Let's search for a custom attribute. 
Now we can use it as our selection. Perfect. So let's set the offset value to something really, really small. To recreate the first bevel segment, I want to scale those faces now. We can do this simply with the scale elements node. Remember that node? We used it before. We use it at the beginning of the creation process of our donut. It allows us to scale each face at its own origin. We just need to plug in a selection, which will be the top output from the extrude mesh node. Let's adjust the scale a little bit. And there we have our first bevel segment. To create more realistic results, I will add a little bit more resolution with one more segment. Let's duplicate the extrude mesh and scale elements node and plug them after. Now, let's make the scaling a little bit smaller. And that's it. We've created nice beveled geometry. To make the result looks better, we can set the shading to smooth. But this time, instead of using the set shade smooth node, I want to add the smooth by angle group. This group comes with Blender by default and works like an auto smooth option. Let's select ignore sharpness and play with the angle value to create the desired results. Let's join our new sprinkles with the icing. Perfect. Our donut is starting to look really nice. The last thing in this tutorial will be a new material for the sprinkles. As you can see, donuts often have colorful sprinkles. But currently we have only a single color. Let's fix that. To do this, we will need a new attribute that we can use inside the shader editor. Let's add the store named attribute node at the end and name it random ID. I will leave it as a float. What I want to create is a random black and white value, so every sprinkle should have a different value between 0 and 1. To do that, we first need to be able to separate the sprinkles. How can we do that? One option is to use the Mesh Island Index. Let's add the Mesh Island node. This node has two outputs. Island Index, which outputs a different number for each separated element of the geometry. Perfect for our use case. The second output, the size output, which tells us how many mesh islands there are. In our case, it will tell us how many sprinkles we have. So, how can you use it? With our random value node. Let's add it and plug it into the store named attribute. Currently, we have this noisy pattern because random value node outputs different value for each point of our sprinkles mesh. But there is an input we've ignored. The ID input. Let's plug the island index into it. Suddenly, we have our desired effect. Each sprinkle has a different color. Why is that? You can think of the ID input as creating groups. We basically tell the random value node that each piece of geometry with a different ID should have a new random value. In this example, you can see how dividing into group works. Each sprinkle has a unique island index. That's why each sprinkle has a different random value. Perfect. Let's jump into the shading tab. Let's search for the attribute node. Now let's copy paste the random ID name to make sure we don't make any spelling mistakes. As you can see, we can preview our attribute. The last thing we need to do is to add a color ramp node. Set it to constant to have just a few colors. And now let's pick few colors. Now 
let's plug it into the base color and that's it. We've created really unique particles for our donut. Great job. There is one little problem that we'll cover in the next part. If you zoom in on our particles, you can see that some of them are intersecting. We could increase the poison distance, but this would make our sprinkles look a little bit weird. And there would also be too few of them. Instead, we'll use a better method. We'll delete the intersecting sprinkles without changing the placement of the current particles. For that, I will introduce you to the repeat zone in Blender. So, stay tuned for the next part. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new in this tutorial. If you want to support my channel, you can check out my Blender add-ons and asset packs, link in the description. We can also find the final file from this tutorial in the description. Thanks again for watching, see you again soon, and bye!